Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. I really believe it's an insult to God when we complain. And I actually think it's dangerous. I think we open the door for the enemy when we complain. The message I'm going to preach today, you don't need it. Um, but maybe there'll be somebody you know that will need it. And so you can either take some notes for them or you can buy a copy of the CD or something. But I know you don't need it because I'm going to talk about stop complaining. So I'm, I'm sure that you don't need that. None of you need that, right? Okay. Well, I think if we could make it through one day without complaining about something, it would border on being a pretty major miracle. It seems like the more we have, the more we find to complain about. I caught myself a couple of weeks ago, and I think I do this pretty often. Go to the refrigerator door, open the door, stand there and look at all the food. And then I heard myself say, I get so tired of trying to figure out every day what to eat. <laughs> Come on, anybody ever say that? You ever do that? Look at that, see? Hands up all over the place. Or I go to my closet, which is really kind of a small room, and I uh, say, I just get so tired of trying to figure out what to wear every day. Well, you know, when I was a teenager and my closet was this big, and I had seven outfits, I didn't get confused trying to figure out what to wear. There was a Monday outfit, a Tuesday outfit, a Wednesday outfit. I didn't get confused about my shoes because I only had two pair. And I think a lot of times we, we complain about having so much stuff that we actually get confused trying to figure out what to eat. Isn't it, isn't it pathetic that in a country where you can eat absolutely anything you want, anytime you want it, we stand to this refrigerator door and complain because we don't know what to eat. We get tired of trying to figure out what to eat. Well, there was a missionary, her husband and her and her family lived in Africa for many years, and they would come home once a year, once every two years to visit. And in Africa, where she lived, they had one kind of cereal, and it was called Wheatabix. And uh, so she loved cereal, and one of the things that she really liked to do when she was home was to get some of the cereal that she liked. Well, she hadn't been home for a few years, and things had grown quite a bit. There was a lot more variety of what you could have. And so her husband dropped her off at the grocery store and said he'd wait outside for her, and so she went in and didn't come out, and didn't come out, and didn't come out, and didn't come out. And finally she came out and she didn't have anything. And he said, well, where's the cereal? She said, I got so confused trying to figure out which cereal to buy because there's so many different varieties that I finally just gave up and didn't buy anything. How many of you know we have a lot of abundance going on? God said to me one time, Joyce, if you're going to complain about something, then don't bother praying about it. <laughs> so, God does not answer complaints. There may be a complaint department at every department store, but there's no complaint department open in heaven where you can go and complain about a problem and they'll right away take care of it. The way we get our problems taken care of is by praying about things and believing God not by complaining about things. Matter of fact, I tend to think that if we pray about something and then turn around and complain about it, we've probably just undone any good that we might have done. And, I, and really, we're probably gonna have some good laughs today. I've got some funny stories to tell you, but I wanna point out in the beginning, I think this is a much more serious message than what we might think. And 
I really believe it's an insult to God when we complain. And I actually think it's dangerous. I think we open the door for the enemy when we complain. And so I would just like to suggest that you take it a little more seriously. Try to do a lot less of it. And when you catch yourself complaining, treat it as sin and repent. How many of you are really good to your kids? Okay, well, I am. And uh, how many of you don't like it when they complain because you are so good to them, you just like, really? I mean, really, you're gonna complain about that? Well, you know, just imagine how God feels then with everything that he's done for us and all the sacrifices that he made in giving us his only son and the phenomenal provision that we have. And, you know, I don't have to try to complain but I do have to try not to. Complaining is something that we do just kind of as an automatic response to any kind of inconvenience or discomfort that we have in life. And I believe that I can prove to you scripturally that complaining is a sin and that it opens a door for the enemy. And so I do have a pretty healthy reverential fear of complaining that doesn't mean that I never do it, but I love to preach a message like this because I need to hear it over and over. Paul said that I, it I never, get, never gets irksome to me to teach you the same things over and over. And I tell you, I don't think there's anything in the Bible that we can only hear it once and we never really need to hear it again. I think that, that there's, every word doesn't need to be a new word, it just needs to be a now word. And so this is not something you've never heard before. It's probably something you'll hear again, but it's something that if you're anything like me, every time you hear it, you need it. Amen? So here we go. Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, not with complaining, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 19. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God for those of you who are in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Now, the, the word quench means to stop from working. So, if we're gonna just kinda cut through the chase and make this real plain, if I'm understanding what I'm reading here, it says, if I have a situation going on in my life, I need God to help me, and I, I'm, maybe I'm praying, maybe I'm not praying, but let's just say I'm praying, but I'm also complaining about it, then my complaining stops the Holy Spirit from being able to work in my life and in my situation. The Israelites spent 40 years making what could have been an 11 day trip. That still just amazes me. And I wonder how many years we wander around the wilderness of life trying to find that promised land that we've set out for and we just don't understand what it is that's holding us back. And sometimes it's not the complicated things that we think it is, it's more simple things. And I did a teaching one time called Wilderness Mentalities. I think it's about time for me to do it again, but I actually studied what kept the Israelites out there that long when they could have made it in an 11 day trip. And it was simple things like impatience, blaming God for their problems, blaming Moses for their problems, and lots of complaining. I mean, they have miracle food being rained down out of the sky, and they said, we hate this light, contemptible manna. They didn't like it anymore. And so it kept them out there. I don't remember where I found this, but um, I found a definition for complain one time and part of that definition said that to complain means to remain. <laughs> Amen. 
So when I complain about something, I'm pretty much guaranteeing that I'm going to remain in it until I learn how to be thankful. <laughs> You know, we have to be careful that we don't get... How many know it's really easy to start looking at what you don't have? It's so easy to start looking at what you don't have. And the problem with that is, is the more you look at what you don't have, the more you miss what you do have. And I tell you, we've all got so much. And we've got so many opportunities. Matter of fact, I'll just say it. We've all, including me, got too much. We have so much stuff that it frustrates us. And we just keep bringing in more, you know. And uh, I think God wants us to enjoy things. But I think sometimes you can actually add stress to your life by having so much stuff that it frustrates you. And I keep what I've learned to call a giving box. And it's a pretty good-sized box. And I fill that thing up probably at least every three or four weeks with just stuff. You know, stuff that there's really nothing wrong with, but I'm not using it or I haven't used it in a long time. So at least we can prune our stuff and give away things that we're not using because there's somebody out there that would use it. It at least helps you keep your sanity if you live just a little bit more simple. But let's be thankful, and I mean thankful on purpose. I thank God for hot water. I love to take a hot shower or a hot bath, and I thank God for hot water. I thank God for clean water, that I don't have to walk miles and miles to get my water. I thank God a lot of days. I'll start out, thank you, God, that I can walk and talk and see and hear. How many people can't just roll out of bed in the morning and take off and just imagine people that are, are paraplegics or they're in wheelchairs, how long it takes them just to even do something like go to the bathroom. And then we find so many things to complain about. Do all things without grumbling or disputing. Philippians 2, 14 through 15, we got to get this. Do all things without grumbling. The Amplified Bible says, without grumbling, fault finding, and complaining against God and questioning and doubting among yourselves. All things. How many things are we supposed to do without complaining? All. How many? All. When are we supposed to give thanks? <laughs> and this is why he says to live without complaining. That you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and a twisted generation among whom you shine as lights in the world. So God says one of the ways that you can get out in the world and be a bright light for me is just to do the opposite of what the world does and be thankful instead of complaining. Don't sit at the lunch table and complain with everybody else that you work with about the working conditions and the boss and the this and the that and the something else. Don't blend in, stand out. And maybe you could say something like, well, I know everything's not perfect here, but I'm thankful that I've got a job. There's a lot of people that don't have jobs. Or, or maybe when you want to complain about the husband you've got, you could remember that there's some lonely woman somewhere that would probably love to take him off your hands. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Just think, some people don't ever even have anybody to sit down and eat a meal with. We have so much. Inconvenience and complaining. Well, I took eight weeks. And during that eight weeks, I listed all the things that happened to me that I could have and probably did complain about. And uh, so I thought I'd share with you that in eight weeks, 34 things happened to me. See, stuff is happening all the time. And I mean, I, I think, I don't know if game is a good word to use, but I think that we should just almost make it like a game that we play with the devil. That we just refuse to complain no matter what 
he throws against us. Let, let's just see after today how long we can go and with, with the devil just aggravating us and us just saying, thank God I'm so blessed. Thank God I'm so blessed. And see, even, here's the thing, even when we have a problem, we've got God in our life and he can help us solve that problem. Just imagine, how would you like to have your problem today and not have Jesus on your side? Amen? Now, like I said, I know you guys don't need this, but how many of you can think of somebody you know that needs this message? And you could, so see, I don't know if you sell messages after the services, if you still do that. You, see, you can buy this and give it to the grouchy person you know that's never happy no matter what what goes on. All right. Here we go. 34 things. First thing that happened was I injured my back at the gym. Then water leaked out of my humidifier and bubbled up the wood on my table. Tore that up. I twisted my wrist. I left some luggage on the plane. The nursing home called about my mom two times. Now for a number of years, we took care of my mom, my dad, and my aunt, all in nursing home care. And took care of means several things. Number one, we paid for it, which was very expensive. And number two, that meant that we were, never knew when we were gonna get calls, but a call from the nursing home doesn't just mean a call from the nursing home. It means that they need you to do something. Either mama's acting up, Granny's acting up, auntie's acting up. They need to go to the doctor, they need to go to the hospital, something. And it's never at a time when you're sitting around with nothing to do, hoping the nursing home calls so you can find, you know, have something to do with your time. So the nursing home called two times, my back was still hurting. Then I hurt my arm trying to do stretches for my back pain. The nursing home called again about my mom. I spilled a red vitamin drink on a white couch. Dave hit a golf ball through a window of somebody's home on the golf course. I ended up talking to a pillow in the middle of the night thinking it was Dave. I'm like, here it was the pillow. I had to spend some money I didn't plan to spend replacing a couch I didn't plan to replace. I got my toe caught in my underwear and I strained the tendon and my toe, my little toe, swelled up and turned black and blue because I caught it in my underwear. I had to tell my very independent 86-year-old aunt that she could no longer drive anymore and take her car away from her. You have not done anything fun until you take an elderly person's driving privileges away from them. I had to replace my mother's TV so she could have TV ears to help her hear the TV because she refused to wear the hearing aids that she insisted that I buy her. I went to the spa at the Waldorf Astoria Hotel, which is a very nice hotel, and I lost my pants at the spa. I mean, lost my pants. You say, what do you mean? Well, you know, when you go to the spa for a treatment, you get a locker, you put your clothes in the locker. Well, somehow I didn't get my pants in the locker. And so somebody took them and did something with them. We didn't know what. So I'm done with my massage and I'm getting dressed and I've got a top on and I got my shoes and I have no pants. Now, how does one leave the Waldorf Astoria? <laughs> so, I wasn't in the humor right then to say, thank you, God, for all my blessings. I at least appreciate having a top. You know, I, I wasn't much in the mood for that. And so, I thought, well, what am I gonna do? So I put a robe on and I went up to the desk feeling really stupid. 
and said, I have a problem, I've lost my pants. <laughs> now, it's not like nobody knows who I am, you know, so it's not like just anybody losing their pants. You know, Joyce Meyer was here and she lost her pants. So they said that they would give me a pair out of the gift shop if I would go to the gift shop and get them. So I had to go in my robe through the lobby of the Waldorf Astoria. Come on, I mean, this is life. This is the kind of stuff that happens to people. And it happens a lot more regularly than we think it does. But I think if we can stop complaining about it so much, then we won't even really remember all the stuff that happens. But I'm gonna finish my list. So I went into the gift shop and they said, they kind of looked at me and said, you're the lady that lost her pants, right? I said, yeah, that's me. They gave me a pair of pants. They didn't fit me too great, but they gave me a pair. And I went home and that afternoon they called and said, we found your pants. I said, where were they? They were right at the desk the whole time. Somebody just laid the appointment book on top of them. So here they had them the whole time and I went through all that mess for nothing except for embarrassment, I guess. How many of you have never lost your pants at the spa? My mother lost her new $350 glasses. We think she dropped them in the trash can. Our water went off for 24 hours. My aunt had shingles in her eyes and had to be taken to an eye specialist a number of times. Had a situation at work I wasn't expecting with an employee. Dave had back surgery and couldn't go to Indonesia with me. I flew 47 hours and seven days to Indonesia and back. And while I was there, the city flooded and I wasn't able to do what I went there for. Are we having fun yet? My aunt was taken to the hospital with pneumonia. Three hours after I got home from Indonesia, I got a call to come and get my aunt from the hospital. Our website was down for two days. The phones went out at the office. I jammed my toe into the leg of the couch. Had to tell my aunt she now had to move to the nursing home and could no longer stay in her apartment. I had a stomach virus. The fire alarms were being tested all day at the hotel where I was staying while having a conference. And Last but not least, I drank my entire protein shake after realizing that Dave had coated the shaker cup with Dawn dishwashing soap <laughs> the night before and left it to soak. And I didn't see it. I just poured the water out, out but there was soap in it, so I guess we could say I was forever blowing bubbles. <laughs> Now, I tell you that because stuff happens to you too. But just imagine if we could get through, just imagine how it would infuriate the devil if we could just get through life and realize that he sets us up to get us upset. <laughs> Amen? The devil sets you up to get you upset. He wants you to lose your temper, murmur and complain, act like everybody else out in the world so people can't tell any difference between us and anybody else. We are not supposed to blend in, we're supposed to stand out. And that doesn't mean that we have to <laughs> preach to everybody we see. Matter of fact, I think sometimes that does more harm than good. But boy, if we get out there and just live the life. I mean, can you imagine Jesus complaining? I'm so tired of eating the same old fish every day. So tired of sleeping out here with no nice bed and pillow. He said, hey, if you're gonna follow me, I have nowhere to lay my head. He didn't say that following him was gonna be easy. He said it was going to be challenging. Well, complaining can certainly make our prayers ineffective. Instead, we need to focus on and be thankful for the good things that God has brought into our lives.
Today we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayor Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they have been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite long, but they never go to medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And you know. This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, you are, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek: van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's, tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash partner. Al gezien, frisse impulsen. Nu bij Joyce Meyer Nederlands op Facebook.